Welcome again to the broadcast. Bob is off today. Joining us now from Cedar Falls, Iowa, Senator Charles Grassley, and with us here, Congressman Barney Frank. Congressman Frank, I want to start with you. You helped push this tax idea through with to tax these bonuses on AIG. Do you have any sense, you have any support from the White House on this? I believe so, but I, I should say here, the, the committee that I chair does not have jurisdiction over taxes, and I've been busy with other aspects of it. I voted for the bill. Um, I was not a, a, a major uh, advocate. Um, I will say that uh, there are a number of routes we ought to take. I have actually been engaged with the executive branch trying to push him to do what I think is the best way to deal with this, which is to assert our rights, the United States government, as the owner of that company. We own about 80% of the company. Um, people are worried about taxation being used in this way. People are worried about interfering with contracts. I think the, uh, one of the things we ought to be doing is suing as a shareholder, uh, saying, look, these are people who were paid bonuses uh, that they weren't entitled to. If you look at their actual performance, uh, I think there was an element, frankly, uh, with some, not all of them, of almost extortion, where they said, we know all what you need to know, and we'll quit if you don't bribe us. Mm. So uh, I would like to, uh, to do that. Uh, also, it's important for us, and I've been trying to do this, frankly, since 2006, address the whole question of executive compensation and the perverse incentives you get from the way it's structured. We'll talk about that in a second because that's part of the President Obama's idea that it will apparently be unveiled later this week, putting government controls on that. Let's, I want to talk to Senator Grassley. You go home every week. What is, the, what is the sense you get from folks out in Iowa about what's going on with these bonuses to folks at AIG? Outrage on the part of Iowans. They just don't understand how people that make $20 million a year can drive a corporation into the ground, go suck off the taxpayers for bailouts, and then give out million dollars of bonuses. Uh, we believe people ought to be compensated right, but there's a whole different ethic uh, when you have the taxpayers bail you out. There ought to be respect for middle class taxpayers. There ought to be respect for uh, the fact that you made a mistake. Uh, we ought to hear some apology. We ought to hear remorse. We ought to hear contrition. I haven't heard any of that, not only with AIG, but any other corporation mm -hmm. that's got uh, bailed out. We've got small business being helped by banks here. We put billions of dollars into uh, Wall Street. Uh, and they loan money, uh, $8 billion to Dubai. You know, the, t the people of the Midwest just don't understand how you can run a business that way and expect the taxpayers uh, to, to keep you Sen going. Senator, is the best way to get this money back with a tax, or is there some better way? Well, right now, I have to do what I, I can do, and it looks to me like Congress' best leverage uh, is taxes. It's like uh, it, other things need to be done to make sure that people that are on the uh, dole from the taxpayers uh, can't do these sort of things in mm -hmm. the first place. But uh, in the meantime, uh, tax, and that's what we're going to do. I hope uh, Leader Reed will schedule it. I'm a little cynical about whether he wants to schedule it for the reason they put another bill up coming Monday uh, that's not quite as significant as getting back $168 mm. million dollars of taxpayers' which money may actually turn into out the to federal treasury. More like $200 million if the uh, Attorney General of Connecticut is correct. Listen to this, though. This is, this is part of the blowback now from the financial community. Kenneth Lewis, who's the CEO of Bank of America, says the clampdown on bonuses will have the potential to damage the ability of the government to engineer the economic recovery. Folks in this world say the people inside who are getting these bonuses are the only ones who can untangle this mess. Do you believe that to be true, Congressman? No, not at all. And I think you do want to distinguish between bonuses. Uh, some of the people at AIG, apparently, and, and they weren't all getting a million dollars, at the working level, selling insurance, not the ones who caused the problem, uh, some of them apparently were getting bonuses in lieu of salary. Uh, they shouldn't be forced to work for nothing. On the other hand, you had some people who were not in the financial in the insurance part, but in this razzle-dazzle uh, financial part that, that caused the problems. Uh, I reject the argument that they're the only ones who know it. And, and I want to distinguish. A bonus that is paid if you do well, as long as you also forfeit money if you do badly. A legitimate two-way bonus, which is unknown in most of these areas, I wouldn't object to. But retention bonuses are, to a great extent, extortion. It is people saying, as you suggested in the question, Harry, I've got the combination to the safe. And if you don't bribe me, I'm going to leave and you'll never be mm. able to open the safe. Mm. I think it is wrong. Uh, and let's point out, a lot of very talented people have lost their jobs in this financial uh, crisis. 
it's not that they wouldn't be able to hire good people to do this. Uh, so I really resent the extortionate element of this, and I think that's one of the things that we have to deal with, not just with AIG, but going forward mm -hmm. to uh, restrict that. Um, Tim Keitner, the Treasury Secretary, has come under a lot of uh, pressure in the last week or two because of these bonuses. He clearly knew about this all the way back to the uh, beginning of March. Senator Grassley, is Tim Geithner up to the job? Well, right now, if you're asking me should he resign, I don't think anybody after two months has been tested enough uh, that I would say he should resign. Uh, I think he ought to be given some time. But on the other hand, I think uh, the reality of it is uh, that we were told a long time ago that uh, Geithner had to be Secretary of Treasury uh, because he was uh, the smartest one to handle the job. He had to be on the job right now. Uh, he uh, screwed up twice with AIG when he was President of the Federal Reserve. Uh, once now, since he's been Secretary of the Treasury, I think it raises questions about whether he's got his eye on mm -hmm. the ball or not. All right. uh, but uh, well, I, th I think it's I, corporate I, America we got to settle have to respond that. I know some of my Republican colleagues believe in creationism in which the world started in 4,004 <laughs> years ago, but I don't think any of them really want us to believe that it started on January 20th, 2009. Let's remember that the decision to give AIG a big loan came from the Bush administration's top officials without any congressional input. Uh, yes, Tim Geithner was, a, was the president of the New York Federal Reserve. He wasn't charged, right. and uh, he inherited a difficult situation. So trying to put the blame on Tim Geithner, and Chuck wasn't doing that. I don't mean to say that. But people who do forget that this is a Bush administration creation that he inherited. Well, President Obama is going to give his longest interview today to 60 Minutes and Steve Croft tonight. And in that interview, he defends Tim Geithner and says even if he offered his resignation, he wouldn't accept it. Listen to this. Tim Geithner is as sharp and as skilled uh, a public servant as we have, who has on his plate uh, an unprecedented set of problems uh, and is under enormous scrutiny and pressure and has been able to handle that scrutiny uh, with grace uh, and good humor. All right, let's talk about the toxic asset uh, uh, cleanup plan that's going to come out this week. Senator Grassley, some of it has been leaked out already. I don't have a lot of time left. From what you've seen of it, what do you think? Well, I think that what we have to do is build confidence, and I think maybe the president's trying to take on too much. Uh, you know, he wants to emulate uh, Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt called for a cut in government salaries and spent the first 100 days trying to build confidence, and I'm not sure that this is uh, going to build confidence until we see how it works. It sure didn't work when Secretary Paulson tried to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a thing that should have been done starting October the 1st, Good. and I hope that they follow through with it, and I hope it works. All right. Well, it's very different from what Secretary Paulson did. What Tim Geithner is proposing, and I think he's doing a very good job given the problems he inherited, he's, I think, got a very good plan here. And let's not forget, one of the things he did was to put forward, unlike the Bush administration, an excellent plan to try and reduce foreclosures. And it's the rush of foreclosures that have been the major problem. And he came up with a plan to reduce foreclosures and to offer significant help to people not facing foreclosure in the middle class. So if you look at what Tim Geithner has done in two months, uh, I appreciate the, sec the senator saying it's way too early for people to be uh, critical. Congressman, thank you so much. Senator, thank you so much as well. Do appreciate it, John.